Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about the non-VR pawn. I'm going to show you how you can set up the non-VR pawn. And the non-VR pawn is a little bit less work than the VR pawn, but they are quite similar. So we decided to start with the non-VR pawn and after that we will continue with the VR pawn because most of the concepts are still valid. Of course the non-VR pawn is working a little bit different than the VR pawn. The VR pawn needs more information. So let's start and jump right into the map and see how this is all done. So I'm in a map here and first of all I'm going to search for the info file to see the level key. I'm going to open it up. And if you remember from the tutorial from Ansgar inside here, you can define what pawns to use. So let's open up the folder where our, our example pawns are inside. So these are all the example pawns we created for you. And for now we want to search for the non-VR demo pawn. This is the one we use in most of our examples. So going to open it up here and I can see it's a child of the BP pawn non-VR normal. So we can either create a child of that or we can just duplicate this one here. For this method, I'm going to just duplicate it and call it non-VR tutorial. Make sure to use this inside your level key so that you're really sure we're using the right pawn here. And if we open it up, let's first of all, I'm going to show you how you can modify the pawn to your liking. So of course you can add a lot of different things inside of here. Let's make a quick example. I'm going to add the cap from my tutorials. So let's search for it and just place it under the head. Going to reposition it a little bit. And that can be true for all the things inside of here. So you can basically attach everything to your pawn you want. Just be a little cautious about the collisions. You don't want to have something with big collision overlapping all of it. Second, let's, I'm going to show you how you can modify the material of the pawn if you want, for example, another uh, torso color. So I'm creating a child material instance from the main body, change the color and assign this material to this pawn here. And now I have my customized pawn. One thing, for example, if you want to get rid of the classes here, so some users asked how they can get rid of it. I'm going to show you two different approaches. The first would be to go in the parent itself, so in the pawn base, and just remove it there. Everything you put inside of there will be in all your child classes. But you can also go in there, not really remove it in the parent, but you can remove it on the gin play. So just get rid of this component. But of course the other method is a little bit cleaner. But now if I hit play, you can see the classes will be gone. And I have my pawn here. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at the movement. So we are using the basic Unreal character movement for it. And basically two values are important for you, the max walk speed and the max flying speed, because our default character can move and walk. And you can see if I increase the speed, I'm much faster now. Right now it's set to flying. Let's decrease the flying speed. And if I play now, you can see now I'm really slow. And you can really adjust it to all your liking. So there are a lot of tutorials about character movement in Unreal. All of this can be applied now to our non-VR pawn. If you want to change it from flying to walking, you can do this here. So now the character is not able to fly anymore can walk around and now you can use features like jumping or crouching. So really basic setup. The next one is the component UI non-VR and inside of here you can define all different things that have something to do with the UI for the non-VR. And this is very specific to the non-VR pawn so that's not necessary for the VR pawn. First of all I'm going to create some entries here. So for example, I want to have the multiplayer, the debug, the objects and the bookmarks menu. And if I hit play now, you can see on the top right, I have those four available. 
if I press the Alt button, I get my mouse controls and can select them. For this example, the bookmarks just spawn inside the world and I can use them inside of here. And in this component, you can define everything. For example, if you want to add the camera bookmark, you can define this here, or you can also remove bookmarks if you don't want the player to be able to spawn them here. So now if I open the bookmarks again, you can see that I have the camera symbol available to me here. So this is a really nice way because you can define it for every pawn you have and everyone can have its own special abilities, what he can see, what he can spawn, what menus are there. So it's a really flexible system overall. If we go to the class defaults, we have a new variable, use small hover effect, because a lot of people wanted to remove this little hovering effect if you grab something. And now if you turn this off and grab something, it's not hovering anymore. So just a little side tip here. But actually, I got used to it and it feels, feels off if it's not on. So turning this back on for my character here. And let's go to the categories. So the categories are for my object spawner. If I remove one category here and I open my object spawner up. So I go to objects here. And you can see now I have only the three categories inside of here with all the different elements. And you can just press on them to spawn them inside your world. We're going to talk about this later a lot. In the next tutorial will be about data assets. So inside here you can define all the available objects the player should be able to spawn. So for example, this store here. And the way this looks is actually defined inside of the data asset. This will be the next tutorial I'm going to create after the VR setup. So don't worry if you don't understand this here, but basically it's just a data asset defining what category, what title, and what image you want to use for every object. So for example, here we can select only the construction doors and now only the doors will be available inside this category. So let's try it out. If we open up objects and go to construction now, we will only see all elements that have the tag door. So this is a really nice way of organizing what the player can actually spawn. For example, if you're creating like a architectural visualization and you want the player to spawn certain kind of walls or windows, you can do all of this inside of here. Let's open a new category here. For example, I want to add the electronics or the decoration we have more inside there. So let's add decorations, give this a new image. So we have prepared an image for that already. And now you should see a new category. And if you click on it, you will see all the creation elements inside of it. So let's go to objects, misc. And now here are all my decoration objects. And if I click on one, I can spawn it. And since gravity is turned on, they will just fall down. But they are fully functional, so you can also snap them to the floor. The next thing are our browser trees. This could be interesting for you if you have like a big browser structure and you want the user to browse through different categories or things. It's here on the left. We have examples for file system, RPG elements or catalog. For example, if I open up the category, you can define different titles and images for your items so you can also create a catalog in there and they are defined under the browser windows so for example here we have defined a sample image and a default key and if you want to use this just go in there play a little around with it it's quite self-explanatory and if you need help with it just shoot us a line over on discord and we will of course help you with it 
So, that's it for the non-VR pawn. As I said, it's not that much setup for it. We will continue with the VR pawn in the next tutorial. So, see you there.